Professor Roos, you were uh, an expert witness at one of the earlier and very influential trials looking at creationism in the school, the Arkansas case in the early 80s. Do you have a sense that ID is more of the same, a more sophisticated version of the same? Did the Dover trial suggest to you any significant differences between creationism and intelligent design? Uh, well, I'm, I'm glad you asked that question. That means I'm not quite sure I've got a good answer to it, so I'm trying to get <laughs> you You could answer myself. another one. <laughs> uh, before, I, before I get to that question, can I disagree quite strongly with some of my earlier, pa the, the comments made by the earlier panelists? Yes. Uh, I really think that uh, this evangelical biblical literalism is more a phenomenon of the South and the West than it is of the North and, say, the Pacific areas. I, I, I agree that you're going to get an urban, um, an urban rural divide. There's no question about that. But to say that there's no intelligent design in Atlanta is just plain wrong. I mean, I uh, spoke earlier this year at a large Southern Baptist church which have, has 7,000 members. And there were 1,000 people there that night, and Bill Dembski and I were there. And at the, all I can say is at the end of the session, they, signed, they bought and signed a lot more of his books than they bought and signed a lot more <laughs> of my books. So uh, speaking, uh, speaking with some feeling, I really think that the, 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 that the divides of the, the, let's say, the divides of the Civil War era are, are still with us on, on this. Um, and I, I think this leads actually into the question that you, you asked me, because I personally don't think that this whole debate about evolution versus religion is really so much a question about gaps in the fossil record or uh, fruit flies or the sorts of things that Joe Travis does as, as a scientist. I think that this, these are litmus tests, if you like, for deep moral, social, cultural divides that we've got in this country that we saw, for instance, in the last election. And um, for that reason, although clearly intelligent design is different from scientific creationism. Uh, a lot of intelligent designers, in fact, take on board a lot of evolution. They certainly don't think that the, the Earth is only 6,000 years old. So there are differences, but nevertheless, I see this as a movement which is a face for an anti-naturalist, anti-modernist, anti-enlightenment movement which is deeply opposed to I would say the gifts that the Enlightenment has, has given us, for instance, understanding that men and women are both human beings, that men are not superior to women, that heterosexuals are not superior to homosexuals, and that whites are not superior to blacks. And I really feel that this whole intelligent design creationist movement is in fact a manifestation of, I can only describe as a, a pre enlightenment movement and moral values, you make me sick. This is not the moral values of Jesus of Nazareth. <laughs> uh, Deborah, Dean, can I make a quick clarification? Would you like to here? respond to that? Um, I wasn't saying that there are no uh, intelligent design supporters in Atlanta. I don't want to mislead you. There are intelligent design supporters in Berkeley. They might My, even be in this room, Eugenie. That, I would not be <laughs> at all But they're surprised. very nice. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I get along fine. Mm. The point that I was making had to do with, um, with the political pressures on elected school board members and the fact in, that I, I will defend that in large communities, large cities, um, religious conservatives have a lot tougher time getting the upper hand, whereas in small, more homogeneous communities, they do. So I, th I think we understand each other on that. I don't think we're greatly different. And, and I don't, I, I'm sure you, just because this is going to show up on a creationist blog tomorrow, I'm sure. <laughs> I don't think, I, I don't think you're saying that all the creationists are racist and homophobic, et cetera, et cetera. Is, I, I don't believe that's actually what you said, right? <laughs> Uh, Professor Roos. <laughs> because I think that would be a gross generalization, which one could not make without better empirical data. Uh, do you want to respond to that, Professor Roos? 
Well, I, you know, I, I'm sure... <laughs> look at me, man. I'm sure if we look long and hard, we will find examples of creationists who are not homophobic. You're quite right. I mean... But if you... <laughs> But if you read, for instance, the mentor, the, the eminence grise behind the intelligent design movement is the retired law professor from Berkeley, Philip Johnson. And if you read his books, you know, it's, 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 it's the fossil record in the first chapter, and then he settles into what he really wants to talk about. Anti-abortion, anti-gay marriage, pro-capital punishment, and dear God, cross-dressing. I think he thinks that every evolutionist goes home at night. You know, Larry Abel and, and Joe Travis go home at night and say, dear, I've had a hell of a day. Can I have a dry martini, stirred, not shaken, and is my pink chiffon back from the cleaners? <laughs>